Hey, it's Airsoft Mike, and I'm here today to do yet another unboxing, review, and test shoot. And this time it's on the Toku Marui FN57. But for the first time ever, I'm torn as to whether this is a fantastic pistol or not. Everything's telling me it should be great because it's a Tokyo Marie. But I've read some reviews and I really don't know. So I thought, let me get one in and I'll check for myself. So let's get to it. a look at this fantastic Tokyo Marie FN57 so straight away I will tell you it is plastic fantastic meaning completely ABS there's an aluminium or aluminum as Americans say barrel on the inside the actual port here where the the cartridge would be ejected from in the real steel version that piece right there is also metal um, but everything else plastic or should I say high quality ABS. It is a lot lighter than uh, your other type of uh, airsoft pistols because it is made out of plastic but the magazine it comes with as always metal because it's a gas mag and you'll be hard pushed to find a plastic uh, gas mag. So yeah as always the gas goes in the bottom. This takes anywhere uh, I think about 26. I'll put it up on the screen as to how many rounds this takes. It is a big old fat magazine. In fact, let me just compare it to its sister mag of the uh, Desert Eagle from Tokyo Marui. If I just get the mag out. And we're just gonna compare the two. So this is the Desert Eagle Tokyo Marui magazine and this is the one for the FN57 and as you can see they're pretty much the same size they are huge so again as I mentioned before when I did my review of the Desert Eagle by Tokyo Marui you are going to need a special type of magazine pouch to, that will be able to fit this or this so let's get back to the FN57 right in terms of weight it is one of the lighter pistols that I've ever held Okay, um, having said that, you know, it is all ABS. The only metal parts on this are the sights, and um, there's a little plate on the side here with a serial number. That too is metal, I believe. And of course, the magazine's metal and the barrel. So, 
Let's have a look at some of the external features. Three main ones I want to show you on the outside of the pistol. There's one, there's a second one, there's a third. Now the first one, you'd expect that to be the safety, but it's not. This is actually the slide release. Bit unusual, but hey, that's what makes this particular model unique. So that's your slide release, and your safety is actually here. So because it's designed that way, you'll find that you'll be using your forefinger to operate your safety and not your thumb, which you'd normally do on a normal pistol. Right here is a switch or a lever that you would uh, push back that way so that you can take the top slide off because if you want to adjust the hop up, that's what you've got to do. It's a very small hop up wheel inside this gun that you use to adjust. My only criticism of that is they could have made it a little bit easier to get hold of the hop up mechanism, but hey, it's a Tokyo Marui and their hop up systems are one of the best in the world, in my opinion. Okay, so let's get round onto the other side. Your safety is ambidextrous, so as you can see there, on both sides. It's got a nice little under rail right here, which I see many owners of this gun, they normally just put a light on there. Okay, uh, what else have you got? You've got a serrated design right here at the back of the top slide. So obviously that's gonna make it easier to grab hold of to pull the slide back. Now there's your barrel. A lot of users upgrade their uh, FN57 and get a different barrel. I'm not gonna do that. And I'll tell you for why. And before I tell you that, let me just release the slide, which again, is at the back here. So I'll just use my forefinger to do that. There you go, that's the slide gone back. You don't get that normal crisp sound you get when the slide slams back again, because as I said, it's mainly made out of ABS. The grip round here is wider and bigger than most pistols. For me, I've got average size hands and it's perfect. I feel it is absolutely comfortable to hold comfortable to use. Let me just go back a bit. When I said I'm not going to upgrade anything on this gun, the reason being is I'm not going to use this in the field. I do a lot of amateur films and movies and stuff. Uh, my website mwmediaworks.co.uk. That will tell you more about that if you care to have a look at that. But in terms of using this in movies, perfect. Right, so let's show you some of the markings on this pistol. You can see there. Made in Japan. If you look on the metal part of where the bullet shell would normally eject on the real steel version, that's also metal, I think I mentioned that already. Uh, on there, it refers to the rounds that the real steel would take, which is a 5.7 by 2.8, which refers to the same type of bullets that the real steel P90 would take. So those who run with the P90 in the real world would have an FN 5.7 as their sidearm. Kind of makes sense. in a similar way to the Glocks or to the Glock. The reason being is that you see no visible hammer on the back of the gun. Now, a lot of people don't like that because they will say, hmm, surely that's a safety issue because the gun could be cocked and you'd never be able to tell. Well, you can. There are two ways around that. Is number one, you should always have your gun on safety anyway when you're not using it so there'll be no accidental discharge. You're also gonna have very good trigger discipline. You'll never find me holding a pistol with my finger in there like that unless I'm going to shoot it. But one way to make sure whether the gun is cocked or not is I'll show you this. If you look at the back of the gun right there, can you see just inside that gap, that sort of metal block right inside there? Okay, just remember that. I'm now gonna cock the gun. I'm now going to release the slide. I'm now gonna show you the back again. What have you noticed? That metal thing you saw in that hole has disappeared. So that's one sure way to find out whether the pistol is cocked or not. Now there's no BBs in this and there's no gas, okay? So there's no harm whatsoever. 
um, with me holding this pointing towards me. Yes, it's a BB, it's hardly gonna kill me, but I've been on the wrong end of an airsoft pistol at close quarters in the past and I'm telling you it's not pleasant. <laughs> so there, you can tell that this gun is cocked. Now what I'm gonna do, holding it this way, I'm gonna fire it and watch that silver thing that I showed you before reappear. Take it off safety first. There, do you see it come back? So now you can see it. So that's one way you can tell. The only reason why I really wanted to make that point is because I did see another review of this pistol where the actual reviewer said there's absolutely no way to tell whether the gun is cocked or not. Well, I'm sorry there is and I've just shown it. Okay, right, so what else can I tell you about this pistol? Well, in fact, let me go into some of the negatives that I've read and I've seen in other reviews of this pistol. Um, a lot of users say that the internals of this pistol don't last long and you will start running into problems. Um, of all the people that I've seen saying this, I can pretty much guarantee that they're using green gas or higher in this pistol. I for one have always said, and I will always stick by this, don't use green gas in Tokyo Marui plastic pistols, okay? Because at the end of the day, that's what it is, a plastic pistol. High quality ABS, but it's plastic. So, and that includes a lot of the internals as well, okay? So what I use, as I've said before, when I was doing my review of the Desert Eagle Tokyo Marui pistol, is use this type of gas. The specific one that I use is the Predator Gun Gas 144A. They are, or it is, designed specifically for this type of pistol. In America, they refer to uh, a gas called a duster gas. I was thinking, what the hell is a duster gas? But apparently it literally is what it says on the can. It's the sort of gas, we get it over here in fact, but we don't think about using that in airsoft pistols. But yeah, it's the type of uh, gas that you spray on your keyboards to clean your keyboards and to just blow the dirt out of little nooks and crannies. Um, that's what they are recommended to use over there, but apparently duster gas is like <laughs> So what's the point? So the best thing to use, in my opinion, is a new and improved 144A type gas in this type of pistol. And I can pretty much guarantee you'll have years of faithful service from this pistol. Now, I've said all that, and it's pretty much useless to me saying all that. It might be useful to you. It's useless to me because I have no intention whatsoever using this pistol out in the field. This purely will be used in any future movie productions that I'm involved with because this is a faithful copy of the real steel version. And guess what? It's almost identical in weight as well. So before you get put off by the fact that this is lighter than your usual airsoft pistols, it's actually almost identical to the weight of the real version of this gun. That's what I love about this. That's why I love these Tokyo Marui pistols because you do get the dry firing pins that you do put in the magazine, which enables you to fire away at your heart's content with no BBs in there whatsoever. And the slide will go back and forward, back and forward, back and forward to your heart's content. So for the purpose of me and what I want to use this for, this is perfect. Will I take it out in the field? No. Right, so I'm gonna do a test shoot right now. So not only am I gonna test shoot this to see how good it feels, how good it shoots, I'm actually gonna shoot at a target as well, uh, just to see how precise it is. Because I'm hearing this particular pistol is one of the best out there in terms of precision. Right, so let me just show you. I've already got the mag filled, um, not to its capacity. It will take up to about 26, I believe. Um, I've got about 15 rounds in there. Uh, I've put some Abbey Predator 144A gas. So uh, let's see how she performs. And I've got a target set up. And we're gonna see how precise it is as well. So here we go. Right, so let's have a look at the groupings. Now, if you look at that, that is absolutely fantastic. You can't really say better or do better than that. I'm not claiming to be any expert um, target shooter, but I literally just lined up the sights on this Tokyo Marui FN57 
pointed it at where I wanted the BBs to hit and the gun did the rest. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, uh, let's do some rapid firing because I hear the trigger on this, out of the box, no upgrades, is pretty good, it's pretty responsive. So um, let's take it off safety and let's try some rapid firing. Oh, that, 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 <laughs> I can't even get the words out. Ah, oh, out of all the pistols I have, and I have a few, this has the best response ever. Right, now to address another issue that I've been reading about and seeing on this gun. Apparently, because you have to use the lower power type gas, like the 144A or the duster type gas, um, Apparently, it's not strong enough to lock the slide back once the last BB has been spent. Now, I've got a Tokyo Marui Desert Eagle. Um, using the 144A gas, it works perfectly and the slide locks back after the last BB has been spent. So, I'm going to do a test right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give this gun the benefit of the doubt and only put six BBs in the magazine. I'm going to shoot all six, six. very quickly. And I do expect, using the 144A gas, this slide to lock back once the last BB is out. I'm then going to fill this magazine up to its capacity and do the same thing again. And we're going to see if it has enough power to lock this slide back. Because it's all very well saying you can only use 144A type gases in this type of gun. But what's the point if it's not going to function correctly? So I could do this all day. And there's going to be no cut in this part of the video. I'm going to do it as you see it. There is only 144A in this gun. There is not green gas or anything more powerful, okay? Trust me on that. I would never put green gas in an ABS pistol. So here we go. I'm going to take it off safety. I'm going to shoot all five BBs out rapidly. And let's see if the slide stays back. Perfect. It stays back. No issues there. Now I'm going to fill the magazine up to its capacity and do the same thing. And let's see if we get the same results. Apparently, if you fill the magazine to its capacity, and if you use the recommended gas for this type of pistol, you got no chance in hell of this slide locking back once the last round has been spent. So right now, without cutting the video, I'm going to do this test for you so there'll be no edits in this particular section of the video. No fancy fading in and out and all that nonsense. I've got the magazine stacked to its capacity. Each BB stacked perfectly. No gaps, so there should be no misfiring. I'm going to load it up in the gun. I'm also going to do... No, I was going to do some rapid firing, I won't, because that wouldn't be fair, because that will make the magazine go really cold, and that will also uh, drop the performance of the pistol. So I'm going to do your normal shooting, okay? Normal firing, and let's see if this bad boy locks back once the last BB has been spent. And again, I have Abbey Predator 144A gas inside this pistol, not green gas. So this could go either way. So here we go. Right, straight away, it's not happening. As you can see and hear, there's no more BBs in this magazine. Let me show you. It's gone, it's empty, not a single BB left. And it hasn't locked back. So, what can we draw from that then? Not necessarily a fault of the gun. A lot of things can affect the performance of an airsoft pistol, an airsoft gas blowback pistol. Could be the temperature of the room. 
it could be that I didn't leave the magazine long enough to warm up a bit. It could have been still very cold from the last shoot that I did. I've only got one magazine for it. I'm going to order some more in. In fact, I recommend, if you are going to take this out in the field, to have more than one magazine. So there you go. Using 144A type gas, which is a lower power type gas, the magazine will not lock back if you fill, I'll say that again, the slide will not lock back if you fill the magazine to its capacity and shoot all the BBs out. This don't lock back. But as you saw earlier, with fewer BBs in the magazine, it locks back perfectly. So maybe there's your answer. Make sure you have more than one magazine and don't fill the mag to its capacity. Or you can risk it and use green gas, because I can guarantee you green gas will lock back this bad boy after emptying a complete magazine. So there you have it. There's my review of the Tokyo Marui FN57. So, does the Tokyo Marui FN57 deserve a space on my wall of airsoft? Well, um, of course it does. It's a fantastic pistol, a fantastic looking pistol, and I'll be using it mainly for any amateur action movies I may be filming in the future. Won't be taking it on the field though, but it's a nice looking piece.